Good morning. I'm getting organized for my day. I really need some coffee too, so I'm excited to do this video. I'm kind of getting organized. Give me a second to find the video. It's a miracle. Someone's already here. Hi, Brittany. <laughs> I'm like, good morning. I'm getting organized now. Hold on. Let me find the video. I have to give it to my admins because they never see when I go live anymore. Good morning. Good morning. I want to talk about the energy because it's been feeling kind of weird the past couple days in my reality anyway. So I want to talk about the energy and what is happening to I've just summoned my friends. I have a, kind of a lot going on at once. My New Year's resolution will be to stop complaining about it too because I tend to complain about the things I ask for in my life, right? <laughs> I ask, can you turn my ascension up? And then I'm complaining in the admin chat about it and stuff like that. That'll probably be my New Year's resolution. So we're getting, we're receiving the things that we ask for, whether we realize it or not. The problem is a lot of people are putting out vibrations for what they don't want and the universe doesn't discern much between the two so if you're putting out vibrations I don't want this I don't want this to happen it probably will happen um, so usually we kind of have to just work out what kind of frequencies we're putting out people will sit there and think about a situation oh my god I don't want this to happen and then they create it not trying to um, in whatever regard we're getting ready for a hell of a storm <laughs> What, did you think that we would close out the year without something spectacular would happen? Like, seriously, did you guys really think that, right? Um, so, we're in our week of rest. Weird things are happening with the frequencies. Like, you know, Monday the frequencies are through the roof. The past two days they weren't feeling that hot. Um, and so weird things are happening with the Earth's frequencies that are really affecting all of us. A lot of times we're having ascension symptoms pop up around us. It could be your friends, people in the group, you know, at times. These symptoms are similar to detoxing off of drugs. If you look at drug withdrawal symptoms, detox symptoms in general, ascension symptoms, you know, symptoms from solar flares, they all kind of line up, right? So what is happening is things are happening with the frequencies. We are very vibrational beings. Like, we are so sensitive. I'm telling you, you go get locked in a room with someone like real low vibe all day and see how you feel afterwards. You're going to feel like shit. Um, so we're really sensitive to our environment and to other people's vibrations and frequency too. We're even more sensitive to the earth and what is happening. People have this disconnect between the planet and ourselves now. Yeah, society has this disconnect between poisoning the earth and the sickness occurring on the planet and how if you poison the planet, it will make people sick because we're like cells in a body. Um, there's this disconnect between the oneness because, you know, we are this ecosystem that really is affected by any kind of life going on on this planet. Any lessons happening are affecting everyone and there's this disconnect when people are experiencing that state of separateness and they have lost that connection with the earth and have lost the realization of how important that interconnectedness is. Let's see. Good morning. I'm going to have coffee real quick before I have to do a real video today. I wasn't feeling like it today either, <laughs> but I had to do a real video because of our Stonehenge stuff I'm doing. So I'll be doing a real feed too. I wasn't really feeling like it. I'm glad it's Friday because then I can just kind of disappear anyway. So we should be resting up. I'm doing great. We should be resting up this week because we're going to go through a crazy kind of um, ascension gateway. <laughs> with the equinox storm that's coming um it should hit like oh tuesday imagine that if people know me you'll think that's funny oh the storm should hit tuesday my husband has court that day imagine that they always do his court stuff i noticed by the space storms too <laughs> all his letters anything he does with it it's always in sync with the energy right these systems have a better understanding of it than us probably so um you guys should be resting because, you know, I'll be feeling it probably Monday. Sometimes if you're not that energy sensitive, you won't be feeling it, you know, till closer to the full moon or whatever. 
but you might want to rest up. You know that the lunar energy affects our sleep state and we don't get the same kind of sleep. People should be having more dreams. I love it. So I'm doing a lot of like dream stuff, dream recall, um, subconscious reprogramming and things like that. And the little tactics that I've been using before night, before going to sleep, like, you know, setting my intention to retrieve my memories and telling my subconscious they're actually very important to my ascension and I need them back. And I'm having like crazy lucid dream experiences, but I'm having much better dream recall too and processing it you know it's kind of like getting a glimpse into our actual reality but it's also a glimpse into where we're headed here in this reality the dream state it's really the future of humanity here so it's been working kind of a little too good right <laughs> careful what you ask for um so i've been doing these little sleep things and it's working real crazy yeah i'm exploring the dream world i always say that people get upset when i say i like it better there Sorry, sleep is my favorite time of the day. Um, it's very important for healing our bodies too that we get good sleep. A lot of times ascension can mess with your sleep, right? <laughs> ascension, bad for sleep sometimes. You could be up at three in the morning, waking up more. I don't know, it's just really crazy on your sleep as you're going through this third eye expansion. It's gonna affect your sleep state and your connection to those places. Good. Holly's birthday's Tuesday. Awesome. <laughs> like, awesome. I love birthdays around here, right? I said, hold the Christmas present. You can get me a birthday present. <laughs> Someone. <laughs> I need to put out, like, a funny, like, if you're looking for a Christmas idea for me list on my page for my 3D family to see, like, if you're looking for Christmas ideas, I would like a tattoo, please, weed, <laughs> crystals, rocks, right? <laughs> I should make, like, a list of Christmas ideas for fun. My family would die, right? <laughs> Good morning. There's a lot happening behind the scenes with these systems. I told my husband they are past the point of no return with these systems. <laughs> I always make a joke, but I'm serious. This is what happens when you build a society on genomic law claiming it's God. <laughs> this is where we've ended up, okay? Um, you know how it is, channeling. <laughs> Channelings, right? So, this is where we have ended up. So many people have their faith that these systems are gonna, you know, fire one person and just magically fix themselves. Same in the UK as the US. They want to, like, fire several people, one person, and they think it will just solve an entire system problem. And I was reading, um, <laughs> our pasts are colliding in the now. Like, I don't know how to say it any more basic. Your parents, they're aspects of your past. They are who you were in the past. Like, people don't understand how our lessons are so interconnected. That's why we get so triggered and hurt so deeply by the people around us, right? It tends to hurt us on a soul level when we collide with our own actions in whatever way. So, we're working hard on our ascension and we're rising up the ranks of this hierarchy of light, right? We're here, we've realized we're here to, you know, do soul work and things like that. Well, the same is happening with the dark right now. They're getting promoted. They're probably all getting Christmas bonuses from the Illuminati too, right? I just asked the, um, the universe, can I, can I get a galactic raise too? I think I should get one too. I'm watching the Illuminati all get raises. <laughs> Christmas bonuses. All right, so we have these system issues. The problem I see is that people are beginning to wake up and sue these corporations. We have these huge lawsuits making the news. Monsanto, right? They're a good one. Johnson & Johnson. We have all these people waking up and saying no. But the problem is, is that these cases are going to these courts and getting thrown out. <laughs> They're always going to be siding with the corporations. This is kind of a corporation slash system intertwined issue we have going on. When these systems have no longer become for the people, they are for making hella cash and, you know, financing their operation through these corporations and through the laws that they're making in legislation. Sorry, we're going to spend another week in the underworld. <laughs> we're going to get a nice tour of these systems and what is happening. We have those uprisings going on. France is a huge country. I would like to remind people of that too. It's really big. In comparison to the UK, anyway, they say. Hi, Jeffrey. We're talking. We're exploring our darkness. These systems. 
Now, I always tell people that these, these people <laughs> destroying the planet, they were you in a past life. I'm sorry, I hate to say it. Can you just picture your life now asleep and what a train wreck it was? Imagine, you know, an entire cycle like that, just sleepwalking, okay? So people have been cut off from that. They have, we have so many, we have more empaths crying about the narcissist in one group than there are in the light worker or the world group. It's concerning to our amends that there are more people stuck in that victim mentality than the ones that have progressed forward to become light workers, right? <laughs> a lot of people are dealing with those control drama type of relationships or have on their path. You can look at that if you're dealing with one of those narcissist kind of control drama mirror relationships. That That is like the ultimate tour of your own darkness before you reach the light. <laughs> so people aren't realizing you're meant to let go and progress into the light and into better, you know, unions and things like that. Hi, Dale. So we have shooting stars. Many. I didn't really look at it, but anytime I hear shooting stars or meteorites, I get really excited if you know me. Um, one of my favorite crystals that I use is a meteorite because <laughs> it's a space rock. It has space frequencies, so I'm very into these kind of things. It's a really good energy for manifesting, even though that we are resting for this week. I can only describe the energy as setting the stage for this next space storm. So, you know, there are kind of solar winds that have been going on all month anyway. <laughs> There's a lot. I just kind of look at it like our planet is literally moving through space and moving into higher consciousness, higher densities, higher frequencies as it's making this journey. This is about to be a big year for us. I'm trying to think what else we're doing. So we're going to see the systems. They're coming unraveled. The French government says it's at its breaking point. I think that's perfect. People, I make great breakthroughs when they're at their breaking point. I'm at my breaking point all the time too. It's cool. I make my best breakthroughs when I'm at my breaking point, right? They say that, you know, what is bad for your ego? When your ego is having a bad time, it's very good for your soul. You're getting a lot of soul growth in whatever regard. So we're seeing that as we're doing this sweep of our solar plexus, <laughs> people are feeling intense emotions. We see a lot of anger being projected at the government with what's going on politically and things like that. Um, people are just coming to feeling more. Most of humanity is working on their solar plexus, right? Every chakra correlates with a density. That one will correlate with 3D. <laughs> That's why we see all the empath, narcissists, control dramas, you know, power struggles, things like that. Hi, Michelle. I'm, you know what? People do not believe me. First off, I've been saying I don't feel good the entire time I've been in the UK to the point my husband's sick of hearing me say it, but like, let's get real. I think it's just the frequencies here. You guys are just used to it. You live here. <laughs> my face, right? You guys are just used to it. You live here. But um, coming from somewhere else, the frequencies are insane here in the UK. It's so crazy. And you guys have such beautiful natural earth energy here. And there's just so much garbage going on. <laughs> There's so much garbage going on. You can look at all that garbage as each one a distortion. So we have this beautiful earth energy and, you know, amazing place for storms and stuff like that. And it's just so crazy to me that most of the United Kingdom has a blocked heart chakra when you guys are living on the heart chakra of the planet. <laughs> like, I would say 98% of the country. And people are living, are living on that area of the earth chakra, so it's kind of crazy. It's crazy. Started in March. Well, I came here probably in June. I'm not sure. I don't remember when. I'm really bad with time. Yes, yeah, so we're doing solar plexus healing. It's a chakra I'm not that into. If people are feeling ascension symptoms and you're feeling like nauseous or stomach issues, solar plexus purging. <laughs> purging, period. Solar plexus. Our bodies are like a computer and your DNA is the software that you can rewrite. I actually saw this really cool TV show. I'm getting trained what TV shows I get shown, right? <laughs> I'm getting good training. And uh, it's about everything I'm into where they were creating people with um, special abilities through changing their DNA. 
it's everything I'm into. I'm into doing it holistically though, right? <laughs> everything I'm into. Um, you know, activating genetics and things like that. And they're explaining that when they're doing this process, that it depends on the genetics that you already have as to what abilities will come out of that, right? <laughs> they can't just make me have some type of ability. It depends on what kind of genetics I have for what kind of powers I would develop. And it's kind of the same. You know, I'm getting a strong message today. I'm sorry, your powers are on the way. You guys could not have them around your low frequency family members the narcissist taking your power and using your abilities you think you could have all your power then going through these control dramas giving away your abilities and your power no way your abilities are on the way we're beginning to unlock them now but um, we're about to just be able to do the most profound things in this reality humanity is evolving and with that comes gifts and abilities right I'm reading the comments so your abilities are on the way you couldn't have been giving those to those systems and the narcissist and your family and whatever it was in your lessons you couldn't have been giving away that kind of power we're just beginning to unlock our dna and to activate it and to recode it in every single way yeah i saw lucy too i see all the crazy stuff he watches all like sci-fi stuff but it really fits my theme because i'm trying to unlimit myself <laughs> Sorry, I'm an aspect of consciousness and, you know, my experience should be no less great than the universe, you know. So, I'm trying to unlimit, you know, um, you know what I think is possible. He's always watching stuff about stargates and portholes and superpowers and all this crazy shit. And it's everything I'm into anyway. And I notice a lot of these shows have a lot of um, subliminal type of messages. I told my husband like two days ago, you know, I think they're coming out with all these shows now with people with abilities and movies because they're getting humanity ready for it on whatever level. So we see a lot of like superhero kind of movies coming out where people have special abilities, a huge emphasis on DNA in a lot of these sci-fi shows. Yup. Uh, we can be rewritten like a computer, though. We can be reprogrammed. The problem is, who programmed our software? The government going to school? <laughs> the government? That's all that is. It's an indoctrination type of program. Look at, look at, they used to call them a simulation program, so when they would put the natives in their schools. <laughs> They would actually call them that, right? They are going to reprogram these cultures and put them in their schools. So they're kind of like indoctrination programs that we get programmed not realizing it. With every magazine that you see, I'm seeing a lot of like Kylie Jenner on my feed lately. I gotta clean my page out. So I'm seeing like all the 3D stuff. Every magazine that you ever had seen, every TV show was to change your perception of yourself and reality in some regard. It's just all crazy brainwashing around here. And they're trying to tell you how to live your life. And the thing is, I saw it, I saw it growing up as a small kid. I was always kind of <laughs> too old for my age, right? That I saw growing up in a very materialistic family that people, certain family members did the version of the American dream and got everything they were supposed to have to make them happy. And then guess what? They figured out material shit can't fill that hole in you. <laughs> and it's not going to work. And then just become very disillusioned, the ones that do make it to the top, hopefully, right? The ones that do make it to the top and do the American dream very well, hopefully they figure out that they kind of got ripped off and disillusioned on the way that that doesn't build happiness. We think that if you have the two cars and the house paid off and all your shit, that you'll find happiness at the end of that kind of American dream they've sold you on. They want everyone living the same version of reality. It is dangerous. They will give you labels like schizophrenia, bipolar, and things like that. When you seek to unplug from that version of reality, they will come back at you with their, you need to be sectioned, you're out of your mind kind of bullshit. And, you know, they want everyone living the same version of reality. And the thing is that we need to understand we have our own universe. Mine might look much different than some other people's, but everyone is just always set on having everyone see their perspective on everything and things the same around here. Yeah, my feed is all Kardashians again. I don't see any mention of the French fucking revolution happening right now on any mainstream news. So, you know, there's questions, is this brought to you by your government? I said no, because then they would be showing it all over NBC, ABC, you know, the news when they do their events, they broadcast them everywhere. We're not seeing any media coverage of an entire country uprising against our government and burning everything in sight. Hi, John. 
I saw a sign that said Drake something, Drake restaurant, and I thought of you the other day and sent you love, right? <laughs> I'm in the UK, I saw a sign that said Drake. I took it like a message to send telepathy messages, right? <laughs> I love it. So we're getting ready for Stonehenge, that's why I had to go live, I'm excited about it. Iris said she didn't feel good enough to travel, I'm gonna have to tell her that, um, that energy it might make you purge extreme even feeling good so if you're not feeling good and you try to go over that energy you know it could get a lot worse before it gets better but ultimately it'll probably pull the garbage out of your body but you could be in for an intense purge if you're not feeling good and go in there <laughs> and you're not used to the frequencies coming from another country it can be very intense <laughs> Coming from another country too, it could be more intense than the people that have lived in the UK their whole life and they're kind of used to that energy being distributed over those ley lines. Sherry, please refer to the Stonehenge chat. So, I'm really excited. It was raining last time. I keep on watching the weather because on our event, it'll keep showing the weather. It said rain. I got the umbrella. And then it says not rain now. <laughs> They can't predict the weather in the UK. There's like an 80% chance rain every day. So, I don't know, but I think it's not going to rain and that it's going to be much better um, for doing videos and stuff like that. It'll probably be warmer too because, you know, when it's raining and you're getting wet, <laughs> it was really cold. So, it'll probably be much better conditions. We're going to smoke weed there. I haven't seen it done yet, I said. I'm sorry, I have not seen any weed girl Stonehenge pictures yet. I don't see any videos of it yet either. I haven't seen any. I think I'm gonna watch some videos on Stonehenge too. So, oh yeah, because this is why. So yesterday I'm just chilling here. I just chill and download pretty much if you know me, right? <laughs> I like to just hang out alone and download. So the rocks are definitely from Atlantis. I already knew that. It's my poll there that allegedly they were created, manifested from thought vibrations from a consciousness group of people from Atlantis, okay? Same with many other structures on the ley lines. They will tell you that they are a couple thousand years old. They think they were moved from Wales because they found this moss on them that grows there too, but they are definitely um, probably pieces from an ancient temple that was Atlantean that were rearranged. So they look more like ruins of a building if you really study them. And they're a lot older than anyone thinks. They're probably, you know, an example of a civilization that lived at very high levels of consciousness and they could manifest anything that they thought about with their minds. It's where we're headed. I always say we would be dangerous in these places, but it's a good example of what you can do when you come together with a group of people to create something. So I go touch the rocks, right? I go touch the rocks. You wouldn't believe it. Like I'm already a really good channel for downloading. You wouldn't believe how the rapid downloads I was getting about the rocks, like there. And I'm excited to go back with more and more perspective too. But even just touching them, and you know it's epic to be able to touch them because the fucking government closed them off for a fucking, the entire century from the 70s because someone time traveled from there and got lost. <laughs> and it was seen by witnesses, people only time traveled camping out there by the rocks, right? And so uh, they had to close the rocks off. They think they're dangerous. People could start teleporting and shit, right? So, you know, they have a powerful energy. It's like any other crystal that they're going to kind of contain the data of any person that ever was there around them. It's kind of like the, I think it's called topography. I forget. But when I first woke up, I was tuning into this ability where I was just having this rapid awakening, okay? And I could touch an object in a room, <laughs> like say a lamp. I could touch this lamp and I could see everything the lamp had ever been around, whether it was, you know, a roommate living there, <laughs> things that had happened in that room that they store the memory of objects like this, like kind of like a flash drive, right? So, um, you know, you can go do this energy exchange with the rocks, but I always say they're like a library. They're like a fucking library from Atlantis and they hold all of this wisdom and so much spiritual energy. You wouldn't believe the people that would go there and like do their worship kind of things there. And it reminds me of Israel, the fucking wall everyone prays to. I went there too and it was probably one of the most spiritual experiences I had that you put a prayer in the wall. <laughs> You put a prayer in the wall, and I put a real selfless one in there, and it was a big part of my path, um, going to see those ruins. I did not see any Jesus 
evidence in the entire fucking Middle East. I'm just gonna tell you, when you ask about Jesus, you're not allowed to. <laughs> it's illegal, right? <laughs> in certain areas and sects that I was in. They have everything else from King Solomon before that. They have King David's tomb and every other artifact ever, historically, but they just lost him and things like that and have nothing of him. I'm just gonna throw that out there, too. <laughs> Alright. So, yes, these rocks are crazy. I'm taking, someone needs to remind me, Sherry. <laughs> someone needs to remind me when I'm there to take some of the little Stonehenge pebbles there. They have tons of little rocks laying around and I forgot last time. So, really, I'm going to need some Stonehenge rocks to bring home to. <laughs> if we get arrested, we will do it on live feed. <laughs> <laughs> for taking rock artifacts and smoking weed, right? <laughs> so, we're getting ready to go. We're going to a party Dale's going to, too. I didn't get the details or the invite, but I guess we're gonna, we, uh, Sherry signed me up to go to this party, too. We want to go to, uh, is it Woodhenge? I was asking my husband, but he's not into this stuff. I think it's, are you going to the Woodhenge party? We want to go there, too, and explore. I don't know. It is really awakening. I'm ready for a level up. The universe has been putting me through hell to get me ready, too. <laughs> you guys didn't see me live the past two days. <coughs> I'm like coughing. <coughs> I said I had the sniffles yesterday. I'm just used to it. Heart chakra purging. I might purge my heart chakra out for an eternity living here. It's why I needed to come to these frequencies on whatever level. I had a lot of heart chakra issues at a very young age that can further propel you into that state of separateness <laughs> so to speak i always tell the story about how we went when i um bike riding and out on those ley line areas because they're right by my house too you know that my house is like stonehenge <laughs> the energy every space storm and usually i'm learning how to flow with it but sometimes i've been having to sit out storms which is never good since i'm supposed to work during them so my house is like the same kind of energy and i was out on these ley lines without any crazy energy and I couldn't even breathe. <laughs> it was like, you could feel it, like pain in your heart chakra. It was like instant purging and it was so crazy. Healing is messy. <laughs> Healing can be messy. If you, I know we can sugarcoat Ascension. I know they have a lot of lovely channels that'll be like, you know, they'll show you all the good stuff. I like to show you the raw, like, sorry, I don't feel good, ascension flow, my admin is throwing up, or whatever kind of real stuff we're going through, because a lot of people like to sugarcoat this kind of stuff. I'm more about getting into the deep stuff and healing it. Yes, I need to do some excavating. I got, like, professional, I'm going to show you. <laughs> First off, I got a blister on my foot. I'm healing with Weed Solve from California. Hopefully it'll heal by Stonehenge. I did a number Christmas shopping. I got professional. <laughs> and you should see the code I got. I got like professional fucking rock climbing excavation gear. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm going back with new perspective, right? I'm trying to figure out how I can fit my blanket because I'm just going to bring a backpack and go across the UK to go to Stonehenge, right? And that's fun in itself. I had fucking my train breakdown on the tracks with no brakes. <laughs> For, first time taking, no, it was the second time because I took a train here by myself. First time taking the train, right, by myself on a crazy trip. On the way back, their fucking train was delayed like a day. And I paid for like a hundred pound taxi to get the rest of the halfway home. So, you know, it was insane coming back too. They had a lot of train issues. I said the one day they're having train issues of the whole year, right? All their trains were like broken down and stuff. It has to be when I'm traveling. It was very ungrounding too. And you know that every time I go to Stonehenge, the cops are trying to attack my man while, while I'm gone. Last time when I went to Stonehenge, the cops came here. And then this time he has court, right? When I'm going to Stonehenge, right? <laughs> Every time at the same time, too, right? Not today, Satan. Nothing's killing our Stonehenge trip. We don't care. <laughs> I was like, sorry, we're already past the point of no return. Hi, Bethany. It was freezing last time. I couldn't even find Dale because I was... I had my, I was so covered up. First off, I was like, he could just find me because I'm the girl with green hair, but I was so covered up, you couldn't even see me. I had like the hood on. Um, so yeah, it could rain. <laughs> High probability with space storms in the UK of rain too. 
I got an umbrella just in case. Manifested a next day delivery, free shipping umbrella. We were not prepared last time very good. Yeah, we're bringing the rocks home. That's like number one mission priority, Sherry. We gotta remember it. I forgot. I had a crazy mission last time, don't ask. <laughs> I'm excited to go back. I'm excited Cherry can go too. It's meant to be, right? We're going to meet another UK light worker there who's bringing her mom who is okay with the weed. <laughs> She's 420 friendly too, um, which is always a plus, right? So we're gonna meet um, a UK light worker there too, which is always really exciting. Um, that energy is crazy though. I'm making a list for people that I'm gonna tune and activate there. We're going for two days this time too, so I have more time. I'm not gonna be so rushed, <laughs> you know, train, going to the rocks, train, right? So I won't be so rushed. I'm real excited about that too, because we can chill, hang out. I said I'm going on vacation after I finish, after I close out my healing work there. I'm gonna take a little vacation, because you know, I'll take the train back home. And I'll probably chill a few days. It'll probably work out with Christmas anyway. So I'm real excited about it. I'm going to make my little list. I'm going back to my site to add names to the list of people who got activations. Um, I'm more organized this time. I have a list. I nailed it last time. I loved it. I get so high doing Reiki during space storms anyway. You know, it's know that, that I'm always running around and I'm, it puts my frequencies through the roof. Last night I was in like the most extreme states of bliss. Just <laughs> loving it, right? So I love working with crazy energy. I've been getting trained in space storms my whole life, my whole mission too. I swear that when I first woke up, and I had a lot of healing to do, you guys know that, that I first woke up and the full moon storms would kill me. And I had a, a partner at the time, a relationship that he clearly couldn't handle the space storms good at all. And it was even worse, right? <laughs> it was even worse when I started to be able to handle him. He couldn't. So I would notice that I would come out of balance, come out of alignment. I would always be tired. So I learned how to navigate through the energies, right? And I really got trained. You guys saw me doing like end time news. That was part of my training and energy because I had to learn how the news cycles, yes, the news cycles, the earth cycles, the energy cycles go and they all go hand in hand with everything that happens during these storms. So it was really training for me to learn about these storms. I became able to predict what was coming either politically, earthquake wise, natural disaster wise, storm wise, and it was really a lot of training. So, you know, my entire mission is centered around these space storms and I've learned how to use them in my own life. I've been manifesting crazy the past 48 hours and I need to for my Stonehenge mission to make it happen. So I'm learning how to, you know, navigate through my own ascension. So I'm learning that like I just rested like two days. Uh, if I can rest up and I'm going to rest up a lot for Stonehenge, <laughs> if I can rest up <coughs> when I hit these energy storms, I can use them better. Your body will be able to handle it better. You'll be able to put your frequency up higher. The higher your frequency, the easier it will be for you to manifest. Someone was asking me questions about it. The higher your frequency is, the more in alignment you'll be with the universe. You know, we're always just at a low frequency trying to do these things and it doesn't work good. So we got to continue to raise our frequency. P is not going with me. He's going to court, maybe jail. <laughs> Better be prepared, I said, because no one believes the psychic around here. And I gave him the same speech this morning because he's getting serious now. I said, it's okay. Just like when I said they will arrest you, but don't worry. They can't hold you. <laughs> I'll say the same thing. They may put you in jail, but don't worry. That What is this government really going to fucking do to you? <laughs> what are they really going to do to you? It's not like they can really hold you or do a lot. So I wouldn't stress about it, but I mean, he has his lessons going on, which look a lot different than what I'm going through. It's making me real serious. <laughs> make me real serious in my life yeah I just have a lot going on with my own lessons it just makes me very serious very sober feeling like you know coming to lucidity like they say it comes with a cost it makes it makes me very more serious like I'm getting more and more serious as I'm waking up um, or whatever I'm sick of fucking judgmental light workers I'm just gonna throw this out there too I, two two examples I see this post in light workers of the world right 
and they're talking about how fucking doing drugs and alcohol and suicide is like the most selfish thing ever. I am sick of fucking judgmental light workers. Stop judging the people around you, especially the other light workers. You guys should know that most light workers end up on drugs. Are you kidding me? That's the fastest way to face your own darkness and conquer it and you'll level, level up a lot higher. So people are seeing this stuff and judging it for whatever it is. I said be careful if you judge someone, you tend to become what you judge. Yeah, people think it can't happen to them, other people's situations it will in whatever regard, trust me. So I'm just kind of over it. Someone, I'm getting trolled on my video last week and someone says that I was angry and that's why trolls are attacking me. It couldn't be that Francisco sent them an Anon clip and they're real pissed off at our movements and our groups, right? It has to be I have anger problems and I'm all fucked up and need healing. It can't just be, you know, they just got mad at Francisco or whatever, right? <laughs> I'm just sick of the judgments getting thrown around at people on their missions, people that are struggling. These are spiritual issues. Drugs, alcohol, suicide is a negative entity problem. We're meant to heal this stuff, not to judge the people that are reaching out for help in whatever regard. If you know someone's on drugs they probably had to say it if you know that they're feeling suicidal they probably had to tell you it takes people a lot to open up about their problems a lot usually people keep them to themselves they try to deal with it right less judgments about the people that are seeking healing on this planet this whole planet will heal the problem is society has convinced us that some people are past healing <laughs> I'm sorry we can't heal you you're just damaged forever broken it's a lot of what the doctors teach you right Every person on this planet will heal and have a spiritual awakening and come back to source, back to God. It doesn't matter how shitty their actions were, what they did in this matrix. We pay karmically for anything we ever did. Yeah, people will be like, this person did this 10 years ago. Get over it. They paid karmically for anything they ever did, I assure you. <laughs> that goes for yourselves, too. People are hung up on things from 10 years ago, five years ago. If you, if you, there's no fuck up. You're always on your path. These are lessons that you needed to learn. So there's no fuck ups. There's no mistakes in the universe, but we need to take that and apply it to ourselves too. Like on every level that we already paid karmically for any situation we ever encountered in this matrix. Humanity cannot progress past this point with karma. People are realizing that there's a karmic connection to this awakening. And a lot of people have become very karmically entangled in here, but you know, we can choose to awake and change our destiny at any point in time. We have free will to rewrite anything here. So a lot of people are hung up on their perceived paths and things like that. Um, we're gonna reach a place where we need to clear this karma. There's a lot of government karma too. So that's why this stuff's surfacing in the news and what's going on and stuff like that yeah karma can't come any farther i'm sorry the karmic people that you spent your lesson with lessons with they can't come with you either we're talking about walking into heaven on earth with our human bodies raising you know our frequency enough to do so so we always want to take everyone with us our family members toxic family members partners that aren't serving us and this is the hero's journey the hero's quest we have to do most of this uh adventure on our own Good, we are clearing karma. It's a huge karma cleansing. The universe is a mirror too. People, some people see me as evil, I guess. <laughs> Look at the post on Facebook. <coughs> I don't know, I guess I'm the bad guy, I'm evil. I'm <laughs> I don't know, what do we say in the chat, right? We made a, let's vote for who could make um, Satan's mistress around our groups that we banned this year. We'll use that term. Maybe some people see me like that. But I know a lot of people also see me as divine and a light worker and a healer. So it's funny how, you know, you could have two people looking at me. And they might see two completely different things. It's all about perspective. We have a lot of people that are seeing negative in the people around them. <laughs> seeing darkness, seeing negative, seeing whatever kind of things that they're going through. I always tell you guys that, you know, someone's perception has nothing to do with who you are as a person. And we grew up with families and relatives that were unable to perceive us, right? You can only perceive what you're a vibrational match to. We're vibrating too high. They can't even see us, I'm telling you. <laughs> so um, we need to learn to let go of other people's perception of us. It's very damaging to us. A lot of people are accepting other people's perceptions as their self-perception. It's really time to let go. We're going to be dealing with some serious shit with this awakening. <laughs> Everyone is on a lot of drugs on this planet. I can break it down for you. 
there's been a lot of mind control programming, <laughs> negative programming, right? Most of humanity has very negative thinking patterns. People are making themselves sick that way. There's a lot of chemicals everywhere. Um, you know, this is going to be a lot of healing. Can you imagine healing this entire fucking planet? We're going to. <laughs> We're going to. We have our work cut out for us. People are dealing with heavy issues in this matrix. We don't just have narcissist relationships. We have people being murdered and raped and killed and enslaved and in prison, losing their kids, their families, all their shit. We have some heavy things that people have been through. And just to have made it this far, to be doing this ascension, we know every person on this planet has been through a hell of a ride to get to this place. Even the sleep. The sleep have it even worse. They're just responding to their negative programming in their subconscious and letting, you know, their reality be created on autopilot with no control over their reality. Playing the victim, right? Giving away their control to everyone around them. Um, they have it a lot worse than the awakened that are becoming conscious creators and taking control of their reality. They really do. We need to have compassion for others too. I know this is something a lot of light workers lack around here. <laughs> when I did a healing post <coughs> for the political guy in the UK. We need to have compassion. Wow, um, I said that last time that we can't be like, I'm not going to heal you. <laughs> I'm not going to heal you, right? <laughs> I'm not going to heal you because of this. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Heavy shit in this matrix. So there's a lot that has um, pushed humanity to the point where they need healed so bad. It's not just this life. We've been going through the same scenario on replay <laughs> throughout our past lives. These things are deeply ingrained in the psyche that we have to heal. Oh, I'm just kind of hanging out. I'm going to smoke the rest of this and do a real video. I'm just kind of talking about whatever. We need to change our perception. That will change your entire reality, how you're seeing things. You know what? We have infinite possibilities. How about this? Someone has a husband. I'll use the narcissist. I love this example. Someone has a husband, right? They're telling me that they're a narcissist. Guess what? They will be in that timeline. When you get, they get home from work, they'll for sure be more of the narcissist. <laughs> if you see them as awesome and healing and trying to change, guess what? You'll get that version of them. We have infinite versions of self, and we're always flipping through timelines based on our thoughts and what we're thinking about. You want to think your marriage is a train wreck and that person's a psychopath? Guess what? They're going to become more and more of a psycho because we're drawn to us with our mind, right? You start to see people, you know, the good things about them. <laughs> Because I don't think people realize that, you know, even healed, like, I've been imprinted by every experience I had. It's who I am now. <laughs> that even though I healed, I realize we've been heavily imprinted, not just from this life, but from all of our past experiences. It's kind of the duality that makes us human. It's just who we are. People think we're going to heal and be someone different. No, it's who we are. We were made this way through our experiences, too. Um, if you're seeing, you know, the good in everyone, the light in everyone, if you're dealing with someone dark, try to see the light in them. And I'm telling you, it will bring out the light in them. When we expect the worst from people, they'll act the worst. <laughs> when we see the love and the light in people, um, it drastically changes people when you can love them. Especially unconditionally. It doesn't mean that you're meant to stay with the psychopath. If that's how it is in your life, right? People think unconditional love, they're getting close to God. If they keep on, you know, working on their dead relationship, it's taking their power. No, 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 no. That's enslaving people. People have this fear of being alone. I can't, might not be able to find anyone else. <laughs> I might ruin my whole life. I might not, you know, I might lose my house I'm living in if I get a divorce or break up with this person. They go through the usual bullshit. No one ever thinks, what if it gets amazing? <laughs> what if, what if I get back all of my energy and my power and my entire world just drastically changes for the better in amazing, miraculous ways? We don't realize that when we're getting drained that we're not going to be able to manifest. If you're in a relationship that is taking, tapping in to your life force energy whenever it wants it through sex, anyone can, right? When someone is tapping into your life force energy, you need that to heal. Um, that's why people in bad relationships end up getting sick, <laughs> broken, bad. They breaks down your mental programming. It can make you sick, all sorts of issues. So you're meant to let go of the people that are toxic to your soul. Those are your karmic experiences. And people realize they're drawing the same lessons to them, whether it was their toxic family as a kid, the narcissist, shitty relationships, the same kind of patterns that until we can get past that karma, the lesson with karma is easy. 
<laughs> this place isn't that. Once you realize, you know, how the universe works, it's not too hard. Um, the lesson with karma is easy. The lesson is simple. Always to love yourself enough to leave. Whether it's your family, your first karmic lesson. You know, if you're stuck in someone's toxic reality, you're always in their reality. We need to let go and create our own realities here. Some people have just always been with their family and then they got married or they're in a relationship or they're in relationship and relationship after relationship and they're never alone. And so they're continually in other people's realities, whether it's a roommate, a family member, right? A boyfriend, a partner, you're always visiting other people's versions of reality. We can create something so amazing when we unplug and find our own realities. You know. I had to do that before I could be in a, a relationship. People are always having a breakup and trying to find someone immediately. And I always say that if you were having sex with someone, your body's going to do like a natural six month detox. Like it's going to do like a six month energetic purge to get back to your own frequency. When we have sex with people, we're merging our frequencies together to create a new one. <laughs> yeah, to create a new one. It's powerful, right? It's meant to be. But it's becoming um, a lot of people's problem around here. And so, you know, we had to really have our own frequency. I had to go play Cali Weed Girl and create my own reality and kind of find myself on my journey until I was complete enough to go try to, you know, be with someone else and merge my energy together with them on whatever level. People are not realizing that if you're having that narcissist control drama crap, well, you're just looking at your own dark side that you need to conquer and get past to enter the light in whatever regard. I look at the narcissist as like deep shadow work. <laughs> deep shadow work. They have what you lack. You have what they lack, right? So many people are going through that in our movement, so it's so crazy. I'm over the religions, too. Fucking enslavement reinforcement programs. <laughs> I'm over the religions, too. I'm just like, oh my god, I just look at, I look at the Bible as archonic denomic law, most of it. <laughs> it's very cleverly written, and this is what happens when you build societies on that denomic law. Look at the separation and issues. And I know the Bible sounds all love and light, but look at um, the holy wars, and every war ever was usually about religion in some sense. How many people have died for religion in this matrix? <laughs> How many people died over that book in this matrix? Come on, let's get real. That's how dynamic stuff is. It looks all love and light and great, right? <laughs> but look what it's really doing, right? So, we are working on Chiron a lot. We have a big Chiron emphasis on healing the healers. Why do you think we're awake and no one else is? Why do you think there's one group of people that's awakening? Um, I always say activated for service, right? But don't worry, this whole planet's going to have an awakening. If that happens, that means the whole planet came here with a mission, <laughs> a calling. And they're going to be activated for a light worker mission. Can you imagine an entire planet just shifting into service? And what that would look like, what kind of world that would look like, where everyone has a spiritual awakening and doesn't need the government to give them their morals. They can compass themselves. <laughs> Northern Ireland. Debbie needs to find Nicola. <laughs> Debbie needs to find Nicola or the men. She lives in Ireland too. I'm always trying to hook people up with light workers in their countries that are awesome. You should reach out to her. She's very funny. <laughs> I'm reading these and then I gotta get off. Checking in for service. This group is woke as fuck. <laughs> in a sleeping world. I'm watching the my students build their own missions. I couldn't be more happy to, even right now, just watching this feed, I'm a part of your story and you're a big part of mine. So, I'm watching the light workers as they awake, assemble their missions. You might not even realize you're doing it. I see some people on their mission every day and they have no idea. <laughs> that when they're doing their Facebook posts and just spreading awareness that they're well on their mission and have a good start with what you're doing, so. We've just been kind of programmed to do what we're doing. So, the light workers need time to assemble themselves. If you can't heal others if you're broken, we have to have the healers all healed. It's my main focus around here, if you know me. So, we have time to work on ourselves, to build our missions before shit gets real crazy around here. And it will. 
So we need to have a good foundation for ourselves and we need to be anchored into the higher dimensions, right? This is all about your frequency, less about the people around us. We can make more of an impact just by um, working on our own realities and our own frequencies than we can going out and trying to change the world politically, I assure you. So we have time. There's a reason why these people aren't waking up. Be patient with this process. Things tend to move rapidly and I've noticed it's like me with my work. I'm trying to do it around the energy. The energy tends to work in spurts like I do, right? <laughs> Where it'll like be like moving shit crazy and just do all this stuff rapidly and then it'll be like chill and slow energy in your life and then all this shit will start to move, right? You can always tell when the um, energy is moving in your life. It could be like your manifestations are just rapidly coming to you, you know, things that you're putting out the vibe for and this stuff really works. I will put out the vibes to manifest stuff and then forget about it and then it was just like coming to me super fast, the things that I had put out vibrations for. <clears throat> so the energy is definitely waiting to create right now. We need to stay focused on what we want our next year to look like in whatever regard on what we want to create because we're going to be shifting and moving to those timelines. I'm sending crazy love too as I get off of here. I know the they really did rip off all their stories probably. I'm looking at the Equinox story and I'm like, oh, that sounds a lot like Jesus <laughs> and Isis and Osiris, right? And a lot of other cultures. I'm very interested in um, Norse stuff, very, very interested. I'm interested in their bloodlines, connections with the gods, all sorts of interesting stuff. <laughs> so I'm real, um, you know, interested in these kind of cultures. All right, I'm going to get off of here and go find my cards, um, but try to rest up through Sunday, <laughs> through Monday, because, you know, I know we're supposed to be sleeping amazing right now, so if you're not, that'll tell you about what's coming. So I just like to be well rested. So I'm going to be resting up a lot until Stonehenge. I forgot. I got to really put it everywhere. I think I spammed like probably 2,000 of my friends with Stonehenge, my little Stonehenge event ad. Like message <laughs> bulk spammed. <laughs> like on Facebook. I tried to send everyone an invite on my friend list until I got blocked too. I sent a lot of people that, um, that little invite thing. I'm going to be doing video content in here because I don't have any outside issues. <laughs> it's easier to stream in here. I don't have to go ban people and stuff. So I'm going to be doing content in here. I try to take a lot of pictures and flood Facebook too with content because then you guys can tune into me and that energy with the rocks through me and things like that because you guys are all real connected to me. From my videos, all you got to do is tune into me and the rocks are right there. So I'll be putting a lot of content up. I'm going to be doing activations which were fucking over the top like everyone who loved them. Uh, last time loved them and the same people were coming back to get them so I'm excited to do it my main focus this time is going to be better connecting my little grids I build I look at my groups like grids I can go ahead and flood those grids with energy and light them up to a real professional level when I feel like it, I'll be throwing the memes out and lighting the grids up with content and things like that. So I'm going to have a huge focus on better connecting myself to the Earth's ley line grid and better connecting our grids to those grids. I'm real excited about that. Um, I have an uh, interest in Atlantis and Dragons this time. <laughs> I always have a different little reasons I'm going. I have an interest in Atlantis history um, and dragons when I go there. I've been kind of directed what to look for. So if you know me, I'm always snooping around in areas I shouldn't be in. I'm excited about that. Um, but it is like the craziest energy. I was, I had to put the whole video up and um, like I'll be handling the energy a lot better this time too because I've been in the UK about probably seven months and I'm getting more grounded into these frequencies and better adjusted to them. So I'm looking forward to that too. When I was watching the videos, when I just put them up in our event, you know, you get a crazy recharge off that energy. Like if you go watch the old one, you get a crazy recharge off those rocks. But this space storm will be even more epic. The winter solstice is supposed to be the best one of the year for the rocks, actually. Believe it or not, right? That's why we're going in December in the cold. Um, so it's supposed to be the best time of year. It was when they were most used in ancient times too so it'll be even crazier of an energy we also have a full moon in cancer you know same time frame so that's a very water emotional kind of um, energy that's gonna be hitting us a lot of people can't navigate through it I can do any element pretty much but I prefer water 
um, even though a lot of people find it heavy. So I'm really looking forward to all that crazy lunar solar energy because, you know, this is a different time of year that in December it's where the sun is reborn, right? It's supposed to be the best time for the rocks in whatever regard. So I'm looking forward to all that crazy energy on top of it. We did not have solar energy last time. I know it's the equinox, so they have a little bit of it, but not like on the caliber that we'll have this time. So it'll be like a real combination of crazy energies. It always makes me real high and crazy. And I said last time the rocks put me in an extreme state of bliss. I'm trying to like keep myself on that bliss forever, right? <laughs> like, can I just stay on that euphoria, bliss, like ecstasy kind of feeling permanently? So they really put you in like this crazy state of bliss too. I'm excited about it. When I go there, um, the list of people that I'm working with there that are either getting activations or attunements, you know that I'm going to be telepathically tuning into you guys crazy too. Like last time I did, right? I have my list of people. I was like connected to them the whole time when I was there and doing this stuff. So it was pretty awesome to be able to connect with people there too. So I'm really looking forward to it. I'm ready for an upgrade. I just went through an upgrade now. You guys will get that <laughs> coming up. I usually go through my upgrades, I say like a week early anyway, so that I'm cleared and ready to be able to work the space storms. It's just how I get go through my ascension cycles. A little bit different than the rest of the collective I noticed as a healer. And I see some other people are kind of on that schedule with me, like going through the upgrades early. So I was just, I'm just finishing getting upgraded now. I was getting upgraded the past couple days. Um, I could definitely feel the energy shifts. Like I always describe it like I just couldn't move yesterday. Um, so I was definitely feeling these energy shifts that are coming and um, they're pretty crazy. So like I said, try to rest up. If you guys want to do my activation, um, I'll literally just sign up on my site and I'm putting your name on the list and finding you and everything. So it's real easy um, and I'll be doing that, you know, when I get there. Love and light.